It's the late Joey Reynolds Show. Big J Sorensen, who are Joey's guests tonight? Thanks, Shotgun Tom Kelly in L.A. This week, Joey's got a tribute to former WABC morning host Alan Combs. We'll talk with his dear friend, WABC's award-winning journalist Rita Cosby, and Alan Combs' former producer at the old 66 WNBC, Chris Doyle. We have writer, author, and former comedian Bill Sheft, plus the world's foremost mentalist, the amazing Kreskin, comedian ventriloquist John Pizzi, producer, author, and filmmaker John Galasso, and with a new book called The Last stage manager standing stage manager to the stars danny morgan and now here's joey right we're on tv and radio that's a triple cast you mm-hmm. know you, we're streaming and screaming and yes. somebody peed in the stream is that right yeah we're on uh, what stream are we on anyway www.sundaynightlive.com you can actually watch this michigan and the nominations are <laughs> <laughs> the wall starring donald trump wow. Yay! <laughs> Oh, it's ridiculous. We are we're opposite everything that that, that I know. when we first started the show. Mm-hmm. All right, now wait a minute. I said, okay, let's go on radio and television, but we'll start on radio. We'll, we'll creep in a little bit, like Uncle Floyd did right. years ago. You know, creep in. Well, he, he did television, but it yeah. was on an offbeat channel. Yeah, it was a, a and, UHF know, channel. Yeah, yes. he was beating off on what channel was it? Oh uh, God, fifty-six. Yeah, something like that. So we 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 have a little radio show. I figured, mm-hmm. okay, we'll go on AM stations, and mm-hmm. you know, we'll we'll do a little show here. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and no one will bother us or no. notice us, and we'll pick no. the worst night of the week, Absolutely. which is Sunday. Sunday night, yep. And we'll pick the worst time. Right. Up against the Oscars. Up right. against the, you no, know, no, the World no, Series. No, no, up no, 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 no. You're, you're <laughs> taking my routine now. We we didn't see all that coming. No. We we just were going to do 9 o'clock at night mm-hmm. on a Sunday night right. on an AM station. Right, yeah. So then we pick up another station, mm-hmm. and then we're all of a sudden, you know, we got the TV Michigas and all this other stuff that we're doing, you know. And, and we're and we're on the internet and we're streaming and we're social networking and every everything is rocking and rolling. Yeah, we're getting it on. Yeah. And we and we're getting a a, a a reputation. You know, people are actually listening to this. Yeah, and liking it because they can't get the TV in their car yet. Exactly. But they they have to listen when they're coming back from the Hamptons. Not in not this month. Yes, darling. Uh, or else in in L.A. You know, they're always mm-hmm. coming back from something. Someplace, You're coming yeah. back from yesterday's lunch. Right, right. You know, I mean, wherever you are in that 405, you know, which is the parking spot. Please put that Reynolds man on. No, I used to tell you. Uh, I, I I don't know. I lived in Calabasas, California, mm-hmm. which was a, a, a dirt road bit, you know, back in the day when I lived there. Right. Uh, we had covered wagons. <laughs> Wells Fargo was delivering by sagebrush. <laughs> but, you know, we, we had a, a little ride into Hollywood every day, yeah. and, and I had to, for some reason, I passed uh, the weatherman who was on Channel 7, mm-hmm. which is the ABC TV station mm-hmm. there. And he waved uh, Regis Film was on in the morning in, in L.A. at the right. time. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm passing him. He's having his breakfast with a fork. <laughs> And uh, he had, oh, he had, he was, he had his full complement while he was know. driving. While he's driving, yeah. He didn't you have could, a driver. He was driving. Oh no, yeah. The, see, you could actually do that, you know, because you're so slow. You, <laughs> and he had, he had service with him, you know, with the fork and the knife and everything. You probably had the guy running up to the car. Do and I giving sound it like? To him. Do I sound like I have a cold? A little bit, but it's oh, yeah. all right. You know, Don't worry about it. I, you I never took, call I, attention to it. I took. Well, you're, you're not supposed to because no. then people know there's something different. You know, they yeah. probably think there's really a good host this week. Well, maybe. So I, I had uh, uh, my daughter uh, gave me some probiotics. You ever have that? Yes, I so, have. So you know, people take antibiotics, uh-huh. probiotics. Right, I got, right. I got. It's like the like the drugs that Wolfman used to take. Hey, baby. You know, I mean, Wolfman was a guy who was one of one of us. Yes, you know, he, he was. was a good friend. Yeah. And everybody thought that he died because he was. Uh, I had some sort of a, a lung problem or something. They didn't, they didn't know, but I know what it was. See. Uh, <laughs> You know those little pill boxes where you got you got the the pills for every day. Every day, You're supposed yes. to sort them out, mm-hmm. and then you you know you don't want to mix it up. And uh, well, Wolfman had one of those boxes, and uh, and he had uh, a cocaine was in, in uh, on Monday, <laughs> Tuesday was Valium, Wednesday was. You, I mean, you got the picture, right? You know, yeah, I, mean, I got it. The whole week was mm-hmm, filled mm-hmm. with drugs. So someone said, "How did he die?" And I said. He mixed Monday with Saturday. <laughs> you know, oh, <laughs> not, a good, not a not good, not a good move. Good thing. Anyway, I'm I'm taking an antibiotic, a probiotic, and they're having a fight. Really? You know, all of a sudden I got to meet somewhere in the middle. It's all in your gut too. Yeah, it's Ooh. no, it's in my head. Oh, okay. 
And so, you know, I have this uh, this thing going. But I want to finish that when we came here, yeah. there was nothing on the air opposite us. No. Nothing that anybody would care about. Right. All of a sudden, we had the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. the Grammys, mm -hmm. the Gimmies, the mm -hmm. Emmys, mm -hmm. the Country Music Awards. Mm -hmm. Now we, we have the Oscars. Everything yeah. is on at 9 o'clock at night. Right. Uh, New York time. Right, New York time. Uh, on the West Coast, it's 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And, they, you know, they even... They, they found now that 9 p.m. is the only time that television can make money. Because you can't get everybody in the same room for anything except these specials anymore. That's it. There's no commercials that, uh, that, that need to have anybody respond. They don't need to have anybody go out and buy anything. They want to do these beautiful commercials that are like Geico. I mean, Geico doesn't need anybody to buy insurance. That's just a beauty mark. It's a you brand. Know? It's a they brand. Just, they just well, they want walk around. Yeah. Well, don't, don't use that word. <laughs> Uh, you know, the Pope has become a brand. I know they copyrighted and, then, and now they copyrighted his name, you know, Pope Francis. He said mass in an Anglican church today, first one since King Henry. Wow. Because he had uh, decided to embrace them. You know, at that time, King Henry w was sleeping with uh, his wife's sister, and uh, he wanted to marry her, and they wouldn't give him an annulment. So what they did was they put her up. He, King Henry put his wife, who was the queen, put her up in the tower, you know, and she was, it wasn't enough that she was tortured by being in the tower with no handmaidens, but they put her in the closet. She was actually the first closet queen. <laughs> and so, so what happened was, you know, uh, uh, the Pope, who was uh, Pope Francis, now I'll, I'll tell you something about him. Uh, he was driving this immaculate contraption, you know, through Rome. <laughs> And, uh, and 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 he's, they're looking for a sponsor now because they want to be branded. Really? So they're going to use Pope Cicola. Uh, that's what I heard. How long just, does this Just last? rumors, that's all. <laughs> I don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> it's the cold. That's it's the it. probiotics. That's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Pope is not, not to be picked on anymore. No. You can't put him on T-shirts anymore. No, you got to stick with Bob Marley. Really? Well, because the Catholic Church will then get the proceeds. Right. Right. And, you, and, and, you know, everybody was starting to uh, make money. Yeah. And that's not good <laughs> when it's not going to the church. I know. I you know, know. this yeah. is like a bad bingo game. Really? Absolutely. And speaking of that, you know, yes. we got somebody here. You know, I just see Chris has come in here. Chris used to produce me on the air at NBC mm -hmm. and Alan Combs too, of course. Yeah. And you worked with him. Yeah. Uh, now, Chris I, Doyle. Chris Doyle sat next to me for about a year and a half. That's right. And uh, he didn't smell, which was, you know, really amazing. <laughs> what you have to know is that he went to Fordham. He did go That's to right. Fordham. And right. I don't know how he could afford him. Right. <laughs> but, you know, he went there and he, uh, those are the Jesuits, you know, who mm -hmm. believe that you should be drunk. Right. <laughs> no, right. No. And, and so, so he worked with uh, both us yeah. And then Alan, after you left NBC, yeah. WNBC. So Chris, yeah. I, 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 what a surprise! I was going to go to your wedding. Yes. But yes. you know, I was down in Florida. I had a terrible thing. I had a severe case of hangnail, <laughs> so I couldn't make it. No, but no, really, I, I, I scheduled it wrong. But I was going to surprise you, you know, and jump out of my cheesecake. That's what I heard. Yes. <laughs> But Chris is the guy that he put up with all our crap. Oh man, this we had crap. We had crap, didn't we? A few things. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And Some great guests, though. <laughs> Well, you were, yeah. you were wonderful. You know, uh, what Chris would do, Chris's job as a producer of the, what they call it, the Joey Reynolds show? Yeah, yes, it was, yeah, yes, it was yeah, the Joey Reynolds show. I forget. Yeah. Remember that? Remember I, I don't remember know what him? I was called. Remember him? him? Yeah. Now you're the late Joey Reynolds. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, after I, before I died, he <laughs> was the producer. God. So, you know, he had a, he has, his job was to go in the hall and trip people who were going into Letterman. That's right. right. Yeah, Jay yeah. Leno we got that way. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. never forget that one. And the worst of all was... Speaking of movie stars tonight, you know, the Oscar night was Gene Gene uh, Gene Hackman. Oh Gene Hackman, Gene Hackman yeah. you know, came on the show and we tried to interview him. Joey was talking to him and he just sat there. Yeah, he didn't have. He ha he was kind of angry. He was, yeah. and we don't know why. No, it well, wasn't. No. A, it he, wasn't. He was angry at no, Joey. No. He was just. Mm, yeah. So you know? I handed him a script. Yeah, I think Remember? so. <laughs> I, I, he, he didn't even say yes or no. He just went. Hmm. Yeah. He gave he gave us nothing. Yeah. <laughs> And he was absolutely the worst interview I've ever had in my life. I would say it's among the top five, without yeah. a doubt. And then I got embarrassed. Well, we did a lot of things. I can't embarrass. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to bring Johnny Carson back. Remember? That's right. Yeah. Yep. So yep. we went outside with television cameras and we shot "Bring Johnny Back." Bring Johnny. Went back. up to the commissary and yep. bothered. Uh, I think at that time was uh, Tom Brokaw. Uh, Tom Brokaw. He yeah. said, "What are you doing?" I said, "We're going to bring Johnny back to New York." Well, Tom was crazy because that was his studio. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And Johnny was going to going to come back to New York do the show from New York again. We thought it was be a good idea and uh freddie de cordova who's a producer didn't think it was such a good idea he said no, you better stop this crap yeah, stop it. and no. he called brandon tartikoff yeah we're no, right to the top no, no it was, we went to uh, uh what's his name oh. uh, mary tyler moore's husband brad uh, tinker, brad brad tinker. tinker. Yeah. and he was the president of the company and a friend yeah. 
and uh, uh, we were all called into a lot of meetings. <laughs> <laughs> you were called into a lot of meetings. I sat outside the door and listened. You know, Dale Parsons is listening to this. Of course, he is. Hawaii. Dale Parsons yeah, was Mallory, the program right? director, right? Yeah, of WNBC. Yeah. What did he tell you to do with me? I uh, never asked you this. He told me to try and control you, and it was just... Uh, <laughs> he told me the same thing, <laughs> and I still can't. <laughs> Did he say that to yes. you? Yes, no. Yeah. And, and Chris is such a wonderful person. Oh, you know, yeah. He's a great guy. He's got several children, yeah. yep. and he has a, a, he's raised them in a very Catholic way, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. He teaches them the rhythm system. <laughs> and, uh, and now he's an educator? Yeah. 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 No, he's, he's always an educator. He tried to teach you, too, Jay. Yeah, yeah. I know. Unfortunately, you didn't listen. But, you know, uh, we, we had a great relationship, all of us. Yes, absolutely. We, we never fought. No. No, we didn't. No. Everybody around us was fighting. Right. Everybody, yeah. Soupy and Howard. I, Howard I, Stern. You will not go on Soupy. You will not go on Joey's show. He gets all the guests, and, and, and we don't. You will not do that. <laughs> it was so, really, it was right. really, it got fierce for a while. <laughs> that was my Soupy invitation for the night. That's all you get. But we started to do a lot of things. We went out and lit that Christmas tree. Yes. And uh, it wasn't supposed to be lit. No. It was on NBC Network. <laughs> <laughs> and we were on the radio. We cornered Liberal Liberace, and that yeah. was uh, that's right. Another Liberace, fiasco. Yeah. that was crazy. Mickey and, Rooney once, yes. yeah. yeah. Well, Mickey I Rooney think, I think, and, and Helen Hayes, if yeah. you recall. And, and and Carol Burnett, when Soupy came in and took her out of the studio while we were interviewing she her, had cleats yeah. on her shoes, she walked right over me. I, unbelievable! Right on my back. We were all like looking at each <laughs> other, like, "What just happened?" <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Did, that, did anything yeah. like that happen on Alan Cohen's yeah, show? Yeah, Alan's yeah. show. Yeah, I got yeah. to work for Let's Alan for for almost almost a year. After uh, after your show, Joey. Yeah. And you know, Alan was such a nice person. Yeah. Such a loyal person. And I was trying to think of some some of the highlights of his show. Roland Werner was the main producer. Uh -huh. I was the uh, assistant producer. Right. And one thing he did was radio graffiti. Yes. And people would just call up. You wouldn't screen the calls. And he just would take it. Sometimes dump some of the calls. And Alan wanted to come up with a way for people to curse without really cursing. <laughs> Yeah. So he came up with another language for the words. Yeah. And I, one I remember was he used the word gooba dust to stand for a bad word. Which one? Yes. Come on. First letter. Well, you can't well, say that. No, no, no. Don't even say it. Chris is Catholic. Stop. I'm trying. I'm trying. And, and Alan was great with the politics. I remember when Ronald Reagan and I ran Contra. Yeah. He just took Reagan over the coals yeah. and played all the tapes. And mm -hmm. he, Alan was such a nice, nice guy. He was. Man. He was a really good guy. And speaking of politics, Rita Cosby is with us on the telephone. She couldn't make yeah, it Yeah, well, she knows what it is to be a caller. Absolutely. I mean, she, he, so, this is a person who really takes calls, and now she's calling this in. Really? Hi, Rita. And you work here. Rita. Hi, guys. I'm glad to be with you. Well, yeah. I mean, where are you? I'm actually at an Oscar party in New York, um, but um, and I actually was almost going to go to the Oscars, um, but part of the reason I actually stayed in part was because of the passing of my dear friend Alan Combs, who I worked with for almost 10 years at Fox, and, and we were office neighbors. His office was, was next to mine, and, and dear friend, amazing man, and uh, just big, big loss. Now, when he, when he was with uh, Sean Hannity, he was also at ABC. Uh, both yes, at the time, yes. worked here. Did he work? Course, did you work with them, with both of them together? Well, no. I actually, in fact, I was not at WABC at that time. But I met him when actually, and it was an interesting turn because I was at Fox News at the time, yeah. and I had already started at Fox News. I began in 1995, and I remember um, one day uh, they said, "Okay, well, we're going to start these whole bunch of new shows. We're bringing in this radio guy. We'll see how he does on TV. His name is Sean Hannity." And then um, it was liberal to be determined who was going to be with him. <laughs> and, um, and they said, well, you know, we're looking around the country. We're trying to find a good liberal match for him. We're not sure who it's going to be. And then suddenly they said, well, we found this guy. His name is Alan Combs. He's a seasoned radio guy. He's funny. He's nice. And uh, from the moment I met Alan, we just became instant friends. A and he was a jokester. He was a prankster. I mean, as many of you guys know, I, I'm, I don't think I've ever been called lazy. I would stay late at night working, and Alan would be there late working, and we would often talk into the wee hours just about whatever happened that day um, or just, you know, talking about our personal lives. He would always talk about the, just the love of his life, his wife, and just an incredible man. And, and it's kind of an interesting. It's funny. I was listening to Chris sort of tell some stories, and, and it's fortuitous that it's Oscar night because 
somebody who actually throws one of the big Oscar parties is a big designer. His name is Peter Nygaard. Oh, yeah. And Peter, he lives in Bahamas. Uh, Peter is uh, someone I know, a friend of mine. And one of the greatest nights of my life, and Alan Combs has told, you know, told me years and years and years that this was one of the greatest nights of his life. Um, the four of us, he and, and my significant other, Alan, and of course, and his wonderful wife, the four of us were in Bahamas. And we spent uh, just a huge long evening with Peter Niger at this unbelievable place. And here was Alan said, oh, I'm going down to Bahamas. I'm going down too. Come join us. And it was like a paradise. It was like an oasis on earth. And here was Alan, very diametrically different politically than Peter Nygaard in terms of politics, but they hit it off, and, and it just was a testament to him. And, and I just saw when I saw Alan, the last time I saw Alan was, you know, a few months ago, yeah. and he stopped by my office and he said, we still talk about that night. Nobody had a bad word for that man. I mean, I've never. Well, I, you know, I've been Hannity in this business did. for. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, no. no. Oh, he got Actually, rid of him, didn't he? No. Well, I don't know oh, how that went no, down. Sean, Sean, you know, Sean really loved Alan. I mean, you could tell that they were really, really good friends. It's and, a show. And you could tell he was heartbroken when, you know, when he had passed. There's, there's no doubt in my mind that they loved each other. Yeah. Well, then why did one take over and the other one got no, subordinated? No, what, what, what goes I, no on I know. I'm just yeah. asking. It's only a question. Yeah, Come on. Know. You're on a discussion. Yes, we are. I just wonder. I'm well, nosy. Let's analytically per look into uh, You know, and uh, the last guy to talk to him is walking in this room right yeah, now. Yeah, as a matter of fact, one of, one of Yeah, yeah. So, so let's sit down somewhere. Sit next to Chris Doyle over here. we got a round table we're starting, and Rita Cosby's on the air with us right now. Kreskin. Yeah, you know Rita very well, right? Yeah, yeah. it was, it was, in, Rita, nice to hear your voice. Yeah, it was uh, oh, you interesting. I'm, and uh, those of you listening in know of the I guess it's now 37 interviews I've done regarding Alan Combs from all over the world. You wrote a great letter about him, a wonderful well, letter. I, what happened I, was, it was mine was one of the last shows he did, and when, when we were off the air, he sat, he sat with me and said, Preskin, I'm, uh, he said, I, I, you know, this can't be got, gotten on the air, but they're going to try to save my life. And he went on to what his problem was, I'm going to have to be in a room for four months with nobody seeing me except my wife. I, he said, I can't have you come. It's, it's only one human being plus the doctor. And he went on to describe how multi, multiply complicated the illness was, which did, he did not survive it. But, but I'll tell you, and everybody said this again so far, he never spoke bad to, to anyone. He had a kindness about him. It was unbelievable. He could argue about anything, and yet there was a unique compassion, which is very rare in in broadcast in television I'm, I'm, I'm Joe and you understand because you have you have that understand that feel about it but let me tell you a personal thing since he and I knew each other for 30 years and I had to repeat it on the air uh, the audience didn't know that obviously I didn't I think he only had two more days of shows and I and oh. from what the crew told me they said question we don't think he'll ever be on again so we're on the air and I said uh, Alan I want to I want the listeners to hear what a pivotal role you played in my life. 20-some, 30 years ago, he was on ABC radio all night, just as you were on, on OR and so forth. And one day he calls me and says, Kreskin, uh, I see you performing. You're on with, uh, you're on with uh, the Mike Douglas show and Carson and uh, Regis and so uh, I says, uh, I'm going on taking one day off. I want you to come on to take over the show. And I said, uh, Alan, uh, did I understand you with who? He says, no, just you come on. And Joe appreciates, and I mean this because of him. I came to the show. I'd never been on. I've been guests on shows. And I and Joe understands this because he's a supreme pro, one of the finest who ever been on the air. I'm sitting at ABC in front of a microphone. It now says 12 o'clock. Then it says 12.01. And the producers are behind me in a, in a window there. And now it's 12.04, and I realize this. When it suddenly said 12.05, I'm looking at a microphone with time I have to fill for the next four hours and 55 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I wonder if many people have... And, but, he, but you know, you know, Joey... You should have had Rita Cosby call you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but so I, I, I want to tell you, I was very... I'm not going to say which. I was very deeply moved because he was a very good person. He believed in me very deeply. And on the last show I did with him... I did a mental test. The viewers at home couldn't see what it was. In fact, if you have a moment, maybe I'll do something with you. Uh, it'll take about 
three minutes or something. Can we do it after the break? Yeah. We'll but anyway, when break. we came back on the air, he forgot about, he says, I want you to talk to me about your abilities. He said, I've known, he says, I know you're not doing gimmicks and so forth. And we talked about it. He's a, he was a, a we miss him. God rest his soul. God rest his soul. And he was more worried. I will tell you, during the last times I saw him, he was more worried about his wife than himself. He says, I, I, she's got to be able to handle this. I worry about her, Kreskin, and so forth. That's the kind of man he was. We can go to a, a, lot, of, a lot of directions with this. Uh, one of them is Rita Cosby. Rita's a very, very oh, good soul. A lot oh. of people may not know this, but she's got a, a, high, a high ranking. She has uh, guardian angels all over the place. Oh, my uh, God. I, I met uh, Joel Osteen and Victoria, his wife, through uh, uh, Rita and her husband, or, you know, through Thomas. And, uh, and and it was uh, you know very special and you, Rita's a very special person. She's very nice. Yeah, so we thank you for She's coming. She's like on. Alan. Alan is the you yeah. know sweet soul, and Chris is that way, and you are that way too, Kreskin. Oh, well, now I, for Jay, that's yeah. a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 We'll right Jay, did he just speak of you in that way? <laughs> we'll be right Can back. I tell you, I would not read Joey's thoughts in public. I'm only joking. <laughs> that's Joe. good. We have a clip of Alan Combs ending WNBC when it went away. Yeah. Oh, he's that. the one WNBC that Radio, that is. You know, when I first broadcast on this station, it was a realization of a lifelong dream. But I never imagined uh, during my first moments on WNBC that the last seconds I would have on the station would be the last seconds anybody would have. It's a historic moment that belongs not just to me, but also to every broadcaster who ever graced the microphones. Every worker at WNBC who made this station great. And to each listener who supported us through the years. I'm Alan Combs. Thank you. God bless you. And for the last time, this is 66 WNBC, New York. Let's do the countdown. There you go. And, and he died. Not, and and he died at 66. He, well, died we at 66 did. years old. Yeah, I know. Oh yes. Oh God. Yeah. Really. Oh, yeah. that's prophetic. You know yeah. what you say? Only because you said this, Joey. I'll tell you what makes this so strange. And it's the show that I did. And the last show I did was on uh, January 13th, Friday. And he talked to me and said, "You realize, Chris, can this?" And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want. Anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> it's tough. All right, let's take a break, and we'll come back with you, okay? And this portion of the Late Joey Reynolds Show is brought to you by Plainview Chocolate Works. Imagine your corporate logo and sweet Belgian chocolate. Well, call 516-252-3855. Let them create your logo and as an irresistible edible creation. This is Sunday Night Live with the Late Joey Reynolds Show. Today, I will help save a life. Today, I will make a positive impact on my community. Today, I will network for a cure. Today, I will become a go-giver. Together, we will make a difference. Our mission at PinkTie.org is to bring the business community together to support organizations that have a direct impact on our community. Join a growing movement that will contribute $100,000 to local charities each quarter. Visit PinkTie.org and join us in making a difference. Give the gift that gives back all year long. Let Plainview Chocolate Works create a delicious, unique, and irresistible custom branded gift made of the finest quality Belgian chocolate. Plainview Chocolate Works takes your personalized gift to a sweet new dimension. Imagine your logo, business card, or sentiments as a custom edible creation, making a lasting impression on clients, family, and friends. Specializing in one-of-a-kind 3D chocolate sculptures, customized gift baskets for any profession or occasion, dipped to perfect platters, handmade truffles, and more. Let Plainview Chocolate Works showcase your brand or marketing message in the most creative way as you offer appreciation to clients and wow potential customers. Love chocolate charity and giving back to the Long Island community? 5% of your Plainview Chocolate Works gift purchases are donated back to PinkTie.org, whose efforts support charitable organizations in our local community. Call 516-252-3855 today and visit PinkTie.org to learn more about how your gift purchases are making a difference. Sunday Night Live with the late Joey Reynolds Show. We're on 77 huh? WABC New York, 790 ABC Los Angeles, Angeles, and the iHeartRadio app. <laughs> We're back, I, and uh, you know, we, we have a, a, a room full of, of um, people who are into are we the mind. We're on the air, absolutely. Oh, I don't know. Does, yes. It doesn't matter. Mind this box. is a cocktail party. I've got to edit what I'm thinking booze. then. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, you know, uh, uh, it comes to mind uh, with Kreskin here, everything comes to mind with him, that he began by holding an envelope up to his head, and that <laughs> was the beginning of. Karnak. Karnak. That's where Carnac came from. Johnny Carson. That was Carnac. That's Carnac. Yeah, yeah, the last show I did with Carson, I said, you know, what happened was I, I was I went on the Steve Allen show. Nobody knew me. I was only doing the local television shows, and Steve Allen had left the left the 
It's the night show, and it's doing a nighttime show that college students were watching because it's doing crazy things at night, uh, uh, taking baths and ice cream foam things. And Carson had the Tonight Show and in New York then, of course. And Steve Allen hears about me, flies me out there to wrap it up real quick. Steve Allen says, we're all interested in ESP. This young man has a, a gift. I've never seen him work. Would you welcome Kreskin? Not amazing because Carson gave me that title late. So I'm walking towards Steve Allen and the show, the, the, the lights in those days were very hot. It was in the 60s and I'm watching the camera that's supposed to be following me and I'm getting blinded. And Steve Allen is six feet, two, three or four, standing on a dais, like to greet me. And as I get near him, I trip over the dais, fall flat on my face on national TV. And Carson came home early that night in New York, heard it was a mentalist, I saw it and watched the show. And as the story is told, seven weeks later, created Karnak. That was me. And the last show I did, I said, you know, Johnny, you never let me forget my break in the business. He says, oh, the mighty Karnak, and we will not let you. <laughs> Well, you know, my favorite one was the uh, the envelope up to the... Well, that's, you know, yeah. That, yeah. That, uh, Yoko Ono. <laughs> Yoko Ono. And you know what the question was? No. How do you order one egg in Japan? Oh, oh that's a great line. <laughs> I thought it was going to be who feeds off dead beetles. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, McMahon and I, you know, McMahon... Touche, <laughs> Jay. Well, McMahon, like McMahon, McMahon, of course, uh, eulogized Carson, and uh, I knew it was a mistake, and... Months later, he and I are out after a show, and he said, you know, Kreskin, you probably know I apologized to Carson. I said, you didn't do that. He says, yeah, we, we didn't see much, each other much after a show. Carson was on one night, and he says, you know, Ed, he said, uh, they find that people who are highly sexual and easy to arouse sexually or attract mosquitoes, and my man goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> he said, the moment I did that, I saw in Kreskin's eyes, he realized Carson intended to do that. Wow. Geez. Three weeks later, he caught him in a hallway and said, Johnny, I apologize. He says, don't even take it further. Carson knew what it was, a p but that's how close they were. Uh, I well, you know, well, they used to drink a lot together. That's why. Yeah. They don't do yeah. that anymore. Well, well, Carson got a little, he used to get slightly. He, well, yeah, he, he I got, know. He hadn't gotten in trouble at restaurants where the mafia had a lot of members there. Well, I used to go to a place called, uh, in, in Westwood, a place called uh, Judy's. And, and uh, uh, Ed McMahon's watering hole, you know, because he was still drinking, Johnny stopped. And Ed, Ed, Ed loved uh, Richard Simmons, who was a waiter there. He used to put the glass in his mouth and revolve it. Oh, you're uh, kidding me. That was me. rather gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, John Frizzy's here, you know, and, and I want to also say oh, that Oh, what a got, wonderful ventriloquist what, he is. Well, he's not a ventriloquist. I'm actually making him speak right here. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, we have a, you have an event coming up, John. Oh, yes, we're going to be uh, at, uh, I don't know. You don't want to plug it. First of all, Jelly. Don't, no, no, don't Jelly, plug it. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's nice to see you and both both of you again. Hi there. It's yeah. been a long time. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. About six years. Well, Jay and I were separated for a long time, and then we, you know, we... He, he left me for a woman. Oh, uh, she's sitting out in the hall. <laughs> she's sitting in the hall. Did you hear him say again? <laughs> yeah, I heard. <laughs> so John, what's John Galasso here now? John, what's the event? You, you should get near a mic. Yeah, get though, near the microphone. Because that's where I'm already on TV. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This. Uh, you want, guys want to put a headset on so you yeah, can actually you can hear the show? Actually hear the show. I, I, I get How severe headaches. I get. Headaches. Do you really? I, I do. They're right yeah. in front of you. What are you doing? This plugged in and everything. <laughs> right there. Right in front of you. Headphones. Right there. Oh, right here. Oh, okay. you oh, oh my God. <laughs> John, John, those are things you put around your ear. Yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm sorry. I'm up. Okay. Now get closer to the mic so we can hear you. This Saturday. Um, this Saturday. March 4th. Kreskin and John are going to perform at Scavello's on the Island. And it's Sounds very Is that Italian. an Italian name? Yeah. <laughs> is Scavello's an Italian Which name? Island? We've had every, City Island. I've had every, every grease ball in the world on this show. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my family, my family's from Sicily. My pa grandparents. Oh, my... that's not near Italy. <laughs> that means this. You can hear that remark. All right, so Scavello's. You're at Scavello's. on City Island. And yeah. uh, I hope you're going to come, Joey. When is it? Saturday. I'm booked. <laughs> Boy, did he come through fast with that remark. Did you see how quickly he had made up his mind? Yeah. Old, oh, Orchard, old Orchard is the beach there, and they have lobsters. But a lot of people don't know that the Bronx is famous for lobsters. I That's didn't, right. Are, are you, you joking? Are you jo it really? No, tell no him, I didn't John. know this. It's true. It's true. Hard shell. City Island is... Get near a mic, John. Oh, you got to get closer. I, City Island I, is... Forget it. I love do. lobster tail. Oh, my God. They got... All kinds of seafood. It's it's wonderful. It's yeah. great. These are not those sissy lobsters from Florida that have no claws. No, these yeah. are the big ones. These are the big these, ones. Yeah. These are the big ones. Oh my God. Now who else is here? 
Hmm? Who else is here? Who's, who else is going to be with you it's, at this appearance? It's going to be Kreskin and John are that's going it? to perform. We mean that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's headlining? Oh, God. No, headlining. Oh, no. That's, I'm looking. Kidding. His his figures, and he showed me some future figures that he's had designed for him. They are remarkable. I, I told him that John I, I knew John. as a as a young man, a man who, and he under, knows how it who was a remarkably warm, brilliant man, and that was Edgar, Edgar Bergen. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, he moved his mouth. Yes. And so, yeah, but he, he was did. used to radio, that's yeah. why. And mm -hmm. on radio, you could move your mouth when you were yeah. ventriloquist. Right. He was a very classy man, though. But, was but very... then there was... Uh, uh, of all Paul Winchell. Paul, Paul Winchell was excellent. The, uh, like, uh, who the, uh, invented the Jarvis wooden, heart. The wooden heart. The Jarvis heart. Yeah, that's... That, because that, Jarvis that's right. took it from Paul Winchell, and they yeah. said he was crazy, and put him in a... a home yeah is that is that what happened it's a very true story yeah, yeah. well you know some people get ripped off i've had that happen to me a couple of times that's where my <laughs> me too someone, some guy my, took my whole mentalist out. someone took my <laughs> someone took my brain <laughs> oh hillary so, clinton oh all right she oh, did never i gotta show you this show you'll get a kick out of this she uh, only because oh i i someone that made a big issue they said what the hell is it that you sign your name you signed a book and it doesn't make sense i i i, I thought am i Am I crazy? And uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, Chris, I, I, what is that, that first word? Joey, is this not obvious? This is the way I've signed before, uh, before Kreskin, the, the, above it. I'll give that to you right there. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Catholic school writing for yeah. sure. But look at the first three letters. I said, don't you realize what that word spells? Oh, yeah. Especially. And that's that network, ESPN. No, 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 that's <laughs> Joey. It's especially. It's a network for clairvoyance. It says especially. Well, you know, I'm not going to write it down. You know, listen, I found, ESP. I found ESP. some. You recorded an, Kreskin, you recorded an album that's in 1968. Right. We got a piece of this. I have a piece of this. I've got, you, I don't know if you I have, have a piece. We have a piece. It's not dealing with the pendulum. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not Please. dealing with the pendulum, is it? <laughs> Joey has a piece that we'd like to play for you. Family. You're kidding when me. The telephone rings. And you feel certain who is calling? Is this like a little bitch fight is on this the air? We have a piece. Or is it unconscious reasoning? Or is it telepathy? Uh, frankly, I feel there are too many people who have unexpectedly and mysteriously yeah, known when a friend from? or relative oh, was in trouble for us to simply really chalk it up as a mere coincidence. What is the explanation? Who knows? It's my hope, though, that as a mentalist, we can reverse the order of the letters ESP to PSE, that is Phenomena Th This is what I brought up this issue exactly. here. See, he knew this jo was coming. No, I did. Jo <laughs> what is jo is jo does, Joey, does Joey think that maybe in his spare time he's going to become a mentalist and start pro prognosticating? That's, this is uncanny. But no, no, but the interesting thing is yes. That that's what the subject matter was, well, ESP. Now, now let's, let's, uh, you, no, that, you sound I'm, very much like Orson Welles. I just book. talked. No, no, you don't. I as God is my judge. I'll tell you the story. I was interviewed this morning because of something that's happened with uh, a guy that's predicted the president would only last uh, a certain amount of days yeah. and so forth. And I, I've been interviewed all over the place. And we discussed Orson Welles, and I told a story he never made public. If you did Citizen Kane, that will show you the power of the press. If you want to hear that story now, he told it to me privately. And it went, we talked about it on the air. And you bring up Orson Welles. Well, what, what, William Randolph Hearst is what... Well, well, that, that was based on his life that's story. Right. So, that, and Rosebud is uh, probably a very sexual thing. So let me tell you the story now. Yeah. Listen to this. Orson <laughs> Welles said, Kreskin, I couldn't get work because the Willa, the Willa Parsons, her, her, her columns, uh, she was the gossip columnist, were yeah. in, the, in, in her newspapers and so was uh, some others. And, and, he, and, and he says, I, they were censoring me a lot in, in the movies and I couldn't get work for a while. So I was traveling around talking about my my work in making movies and we got good crowds small towns and what have you one sunday night i'm in this auditorium and they asked me questions i talked about it i left the stage when i finished i was going to my hotel room and a and a policeman was backstage and said mr wells i'm a tremendous fan of yours i saw citizen king i listened to uh uh, your uh, Mercury, the theater, uh, the nighttime um, r uh, radio show that you do when you're not traveling. He says, I'm going to give you some advice. Don't go to the hotel. I know you have your clothes there. I know you have your suitcases. Would you take my advice and get on a train to go on to your next, m m where you're talking next? Well said to me, Kreskin, had I not done this, he says, hear what I'm saying because I don't talk like this. 
my career probably would have been destroyed. It turns out he found out, had he gone to his hotel room and opened the door, a detective, private detective, was in the closet with a camera and lying on the bed was a woman totally naked, his wife, and Hertz had set it up that as soon as Wells was in the same picture, it would be photographed on the front page of every newspaper in the country. Wow. Had he done it, it would, is that a fascinating story yeah. how, how a news can be rigged? I thought they were to go in the suitcase and find one of John's puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I brought a puppet here. What did you bring? Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. well, see, we're, on, we're streaming the show. I know. That's yeah. right. SundayNightLive.com. Yeah, and I want to mention, up, let's mention this, because Creston well, well, came to the event for the pink tie. I'm mm -hmm. wearing pink, if yes, you notice. You are. Which is a, Joe's got a nice jacket on. Thank you. Expensive-looking <laughs> suit. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a loner. <laughs> Who's this over here? Uh, okay. Tell him who you are. Donald J. Trump. Uh, hello, good to see you. All right. Oh, you must be Mr. Scavelli. <laughs> sound Italian, Donald. No kidding. All right. Yeah. All right. I love China. Okay. Uh, can you tell him anything about politics? Nah. Which, what would you like to talk about? Uh, biology. Biology. <laughs> yes. What's inside of a cell? Mexicans. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Oh, oh, I'm going to make oh. America great. All right. <laughs> But this is the best part. He loves women. I like Jay. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's already spoken for. With yes. Joey? No, not with Joey. <laughs> hey, Jay. All right. Let, let, let's go. <laughs> Isn't this perfect to do on radio? I do know, a puppet on radio. His hair just got a hard on. Hey, what's your language on that? I've been working. I've been getting it. That's incredible. That's a great. That's a Trump puppet, in case you listen yeah, to the radio yeah, and don't know what we're puppet. talking about. John Pesci is probably the best. Uh, oh, he's uh, remarkable. He, he is remarkable, and he's the best ventriloquist. But I, I don't know, John, do we call you ventriloquist? Yes. I, I, that's yes. almost like a, no. a, a burlesque term. No. Oh, no, it's a ventriloquist. That's what we do. Yeah. And I brought, I brought oh, this uh, old man, this? too, here. Oh, you here. got that black puppet that's me? No, he's not here today. No. Oh. The he's, black puppet. He's driving. <laughs> <laughs> he's driving. A Who is this? All right. Who's this? What, what the hell are we? All right, this is uh, the Joey Reynolds Show. How are you? Can, right. you know, can I just uh, see hey, if I get any... Don't touch me, we're free. Uh, I right. see if I get any vibrations. <laughs> get any vibrations from his head? Oh, my God, the thoughts are filthy. But anyway, <laughs> we'll go up from there. It's definitely empty. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tell me your name. They don't know. Smiley. Smiley. You're the oldest man in the studio. Look at Joey. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Joey looks good. He remembers the iPhone 1. <laughs> he just sits the there like this. The iPhone 1. Did you hear that oh, remark, Joey? Joey? Joey looks great. He's older than dirt. All right. No, he's not. <laughs> the man is a very young man. You think so? Say something to Joey makes him feel good. C6. Dingo. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the guy looks like he's farting dust. All right. Don't Whoa. Right oh, my God. I saw Joey on a cruise. What was it? The Nina, the Pinta, the Santa. Maria. Right. <laughs> you look good too, Kreskin. All right. Can you tell him anything about himself? Nice teeth. All right. <laughs> look at his glasses. All right. You watching the Oscars tonight? <laughs> uh, can I make a prediction? Go ahead. Right? I ain't going to sleep with anyone from the Oscars. All right. <laughs> you know, do you sleep with anyone? Jay. All right. <laughs> Jay's good luck. I like him. Why? He's got bigger breasts than my wife. <laughs> That's disgusting. All right. Say goodbye. So long, guys. All right. So long. Uh, that's great. Oh, All right. great. You guys are going to be performing when and where? Uh, no, wait, wait a minute. Scavellos. Are you hosting a show? No, I'm Scavellos. Scavellos is Saturday let's, nights. Uh, Jay loves this. Let's move this, this along. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, get the, the puppet the hell guy. Yeah, get what, him what are you selling next? What are you selling next? Real estate with no money down, a yellow jacket. I have a few things. <laughs> How about yellow a, jacket. You know what? On my grave, there's a reverse mortgage. Is that we're coming to haunt your ass. Very nice. All right, what are you selling here? We sell, well, the V, the number 8PE.com, vaping. All right, now that's vaping. You know what oh, vaping, vaping is? No, yeah. what, what is, is it? it? I, know what vaping I don't know what that is, Joe. Vaping is when you smoke those things that are not smoke. You know, they're they're it's uh all right, let's let's put it to you this way. Mike Cave, whom you met, has the uh, yeah. uh pink tie organization. Yeah, yeah. His mother uh, had cancer yeah. and uh, she had uh, several children before she was twenty years old and she decided that uh, she did not want to smoke anymore. It was bad for her and the kids. They wanted her to live. So she started to vape, which is to take this mod, they call it a mod, and you put this liquid in there that's harmless, that's nicotine free if you are smart, and or else start with number six and work your way down, you know, you can wean off of it. And you and you smoke this this thing. But it's not it's not the same as smoking cigarettes. It's not as harsh. Because it's water. But but she had cancer from smoking regular cigarettes before. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh yeah. It helped. And now, yeah, now yeah, Mike yeah, didn't want I, to marry his current wife who's not pregnant, gonna have a baby in about a month. Uh, because I she was smoking. I and, actually, and she vaped. I've never had cancer, but I did lick the big C. 
Yeah, yeah, you did. Now you know this this great little thing that we that we have here, this vape company. What's what's the what's the uh, uh, if you want to go all learn all about it by going to what site? Vape. P E V the number eight P E dot com. Why is it not just vape dot com? Well, because they because somebody else had that, I guess. Oh, I guess. All right. So, <laughs> they, so you don't want to go to that. You want no, to go to v, go to v the number eight P E dot com. And you'll learn all about vaping. And, and you'll learn you don't all have to about play vaping. a commercial. You did it already. Uh, I did it's it huge though. Okay. Vaping but is huge. But we do have to do a regular commercial break. Right, we'll good. be right back. Uh, Joey, did you have that sponsor last time? I don't remember you having that. This is Sunday Night Live. With the late Joey Reynolds Show. Real estate professionals join Leap EDU Real Estate Licensing School on Tuesday, March 7th at Steiner Sports Headquarters for real estate continuing education, networking, and time with Yankee World Champion Cecil Fielder. Breakfast starts at 9 a.m. Don't miss the guest speakers, networking, and a chance to meet Yankee great Cecil Fielder. Here's the best part Leap EDU is offering this seven and a half credit full day of continuing education, breakfast, lunch, and more at no cost to you. That's right. This is a free event for all real estate agents. Tuesday, March 7th at Steiner Sports Headquarters in New Rochelle. Seating is very limited, so go right now to www.leapedu.com or call 516-453-0520 to register before all the seats are gone. Reserve your space at leapedu.com. Special thanks to sponsors, Allstate John Devine, First Equity National Title and Closing Services, and Mark's Inspections. They've made this event possible. Register today at www. Leapedu.com. Well, that's very good, Jay. I hope you get lots. Extended through February, V the number 8PE.com, the nation's leading website for vaping and cloud chasers everywhere, is proud to offer a brand new eye care and liquid clarity welcome to vaping package. Everything you need a black eye care starter kit by E Leaf and a bottle of the best tasting juice available. Liquid clarity, a $40 value, all just $29. But that's not all. If you go right now to V, the number 8PE.com, and enter promo code ICARE, that's the letter I care, at checkout, the shipping is free too. That's V, the number 8PE.com. Everything vaping, including an I care liquid clarity starter kit for just $29 with free shipping when you use promo code I care. Supplies are limited. Help a loved one to quit smoking. Go to V8PE.com. Use promo code I care and get your $40 starter kit for just $29. V8PE.com. Don't you guys know how to spell? It's V number 8 PE duh com. Cloud Chasers, have you tried Liquid Clarity? Any one of their five original flavors? Liquid Clarity's unique flavors include chocolate, fruit flavors, and menthol too. They all will excite your taste for richness, and they're just as packed with technology. Every Liquid Clarity Premium e-liquid undergoes rigorous testing in their own CGMP facility to ensure the safest possible formulations. Liquid Clarity will leave you with great taste, but never the dreaded vape tongue. Live the vape clean lifestyle with Liquid Clarity's Premium e-liquids. See the full line of Liquid Clarity at V the number 8 pecom That's V the number 8 pecom Here in the month of February, V8 PE.com has the full line of Liquid Clarity on sale. Just $19.99 for the full-bodied rich flavor on Liquid Clarity offers. Get yours today at V8 PE.com. That's Liquid Clarity Vaping E-Liquid at V8PE.com. You can listen on air or online. Plus, watch the late Joey Reynolds show right now with streaming video at SundayNightLive.com. You're going to be able to see the show and hear it at the same time? Absolutely. People who see it may not want to hear it. That's, yeah, well, it might you happen know, put, that way. We ought to put your ears on, on, what are you doing? Pointing for music now. Yeah. What is this? This is the Letterman thing. He's gone. I know, but but his yeah, his writer is right next to him. Bill Sheff. He's not his writer. Well, he certainly he was. He's done a lot of things. Bill was <laughs> my writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, yeah, that's right. True. And you know, when when Bill first started to uh, come around to the radio station at NBC, yeah. he was always very wonderful, funny, and any new sports. And I think you were friends with Barb Albert at the time too. Yes, I was. Yes, yes, I, yes I was. And. Uh, um, the other thing about Marv is he does a terrible Marv Albert impression. <laughs> the guys that do him, 
sound much better, better than yeah. him. But when he answers the phone, it's too, you know, hello. You know, it's like, no, no, it's like, be, hello, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I was on opposite him on the air in Syracuse. He right. went to Syracuse University. He was on WOLF, and I was on WNDR. Wow. And he was, uh, and I, I always told him, you're a lousy jock. Yeah. He, oh, first of five in a row. <laughs> Get out of here. You're a puker. Yeah. Go. <laughs> but nobody does basketball like him. He was No, he was great. great. And, and you know, that was, you know, the, the job you gave me was the first real uh, comedy writing job I ever had. The first time I ever made union money. It was great. And it was me and Brett Butler, who, oh, you, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. and a, a lot of other people and, uh, and I uh, loved it. I have very fond memories. 1985, 86. Yep. Yeah. And you, oh, well, you were always brilliant, and you had to get out of there because we were holding you back. Yeah. No, no, well, that's, that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's not true. Look who comes crawling back. <laughs> Look who comes crawling back. You know, uh, Bill Sheft is, uh, is a writer of books. Yes. And uh, uh, John, John Galassi was just here with a, a smile, a grin, a laugh. That's life. John's yeah. the one who's going to be with uh, Amazing Creskin and John this Pierce. Saturday at yes. uh, Scarfellows, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, uh, uh, Bill, to get back to that for a minute, you're still writing books? Are, are yeah, I am. I'm working on a, a, a couple of books. I'm in the middle of a couple of books. One book, uh, I've been working on a sequel to my first novel, The Ringer, for about three years. And then I started um, this woman named Nikki Fink, who was very famous uh, uh, show business journalist out now. She started Deadline Hollywood. And, and then uh, she started a website that was just show business fiction. And she asked me and a bunch of people to submit stuff. And I said, yeah, I'll do it. But I thought, I'm not going to just write one piece for her and then it's up for a week and then it goes away. Why don't I try to some write something that's refillable? So I created this um, this very bitter, this very bust-out comic, Tommy Dash. Think Louis C.K. without the career and no self-awareness. <laughs> And I just started writing these installments, and after I'd been, I'd written about ten for her, and I thought, well, I got half a novel here, and I'm writing the other half of that, and it's uh -huh. just a, it's a comic that is trying to get himself back into show business by making the amends that he needs to make to everybody, yeah. you know. So that's uh, that's what I'm working well, on. Yeah, number one film right now this week was a four million dollar production of. Uh of something that was uh, a horror story comedy right you know so the combinations now we're we're, we're doing like fusion just like uh wolfgang puck you right know, i mean they put french food together with vietnamese food and and you got something different right that's like uh, uh la la land is a movie musical uh, noir gluten-free yeah. it's gluten-free too <laughs> it's just... well you you wrote for the oscars a couple of times yes i did yes i did i wrote for i wrote for dave in 95 i wrote for chris rock in 2005 and um, it's a uh, it's a unique uh, it's a unique experience and and uh, the uh, the the Dave thing I never understood uh, why I think they were sort of lying in wait for him and because uh, I personally I think he did a great job and the ratings nobody's come close to the ratings that he got a and uh, and Chris it was one of those things where I thought it went really well and then they didn't hit the number that they thought they should have hit. So all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, he wasn't, he was a little too irre irreverent. And, uh, but Chris was great. I've known him since he was 18 oh, yeah. and he's just a, and I know his brother real well. Oh, really? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah and his yeah. family, his mother's funny too. You know? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And your wife, Adrian yeah. Tulsh. Uh, my was... wife who uh, went to heaven, uh, three months, uh, three months ago. And, uh, she was on, uh, the old show on NBC, yeah. uh, WNBC and, uh, and WOR in, w or... in WOR. Oh, sure. Your sure. wife is great. She's just great. She's always been a wonderful person and funnier than you on occasion. No, 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 no. On many, many occasions. <laughs> and I just want to, I'll tell you this story. Uh, uh, so it's, it's literally three days before she, uh, passes and, and she started having some visitors. And so, uh, a woman, a friend of ours, Mary Thomas, brought in two of her stepsisters, uh, and it, as it happened, all three of the women were dressed in black, and they go to the foot of her bed, and Adrian opens her eyes, looks at these three women dressed in black, and says, where am I, the second act of Macbeth? And this is, <laughs> she was funnier, you know, before she, you know, than I ever was. I could have never come up with a line like that. Well, I, will, I want everybody to do this, this, a little homework for the show. I want you to go to YouTube. And see the memorial service for Adrian, Adrian Tulsh. Tulsh um, memorial. Yeah, we it, it was one of those things where it took me about five minutes to put it together. And Barbara Gaines, who was the executive producer of the Letterman Show for 
35 years. She helped me with it, and uh, and when I gave her the rundown, she said to me, well, well, wait a minute, you're speaking? And I said, yeah. She said, well, you know, I know you feel that way now, but after she dies, you're going to feel – I said, no, no, no. I said – this is what she would have wanted. This is what I want. This is how we met as as MCs. I'm MCing this show. I got funny people on. I got serious people on. And I said, I'm not going to be the guy in the front row at the memorial that everybody talks to. I will not be. There. And it was a celebration. And no yarmulke. No yarmulke. Oh, no yarmulke. It was a yarmulke-free zone. <laughs> You're right. unbelievable. And, because, and the you thing know... is, at the end, we played a, a YouTube tape of hers, and she got a standing ovation. She closed the show. And it was sold out. It was it was absolutely sold out, and uh, and it was uh, it was you know it was one of those things. The day was perfect, except for one thing. You know, she was not there yeah. physically. I was going to go to the thing. I wanted to go there in a jitney, yeah, so like I was going to the Hampton. Yeah. <laughs> it was so wonderful that you uh, that you did that celebration. And I, I want I want to urge people right now again on the Google air, God. radio, television, watch this memorial. You will see first class. Yeah. How, well, first of all, you'll see what Bill is all about. Bill mm -hmm. is a, a brilliant man, and mm -hmm. he also is a very kind well, man. Well, who am I to disagree with you? Well, yeah. and, and, and also uh, uh, Adrian was up to snuff with him. I mean, you know, there were, there were oh, Adrian, yeah, great partners, partners. Yeah, yeah, great yeah. partners. And yeah. I, lo I love you guys. You, you know, what a great marriage, great was, team. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I noticed something. Woody Allen has got a new series on Amazon uh, Plus, uh, which he wrote for television alone. And in that series, he has uh, uh, Lane May. Uh, and at, at, at an older age, because yes. she's older now, yeah. she's 89 or right. something like that. And, you know, that the two of them together, uh, uh, it's, it's cute. It's very good, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think Elaine May never mentions anything about Mike Nichols, who she used to be with Elaine Nichols. They, they I, don't think it was, I, yeah, I don't think it was the nicest parting. Now, we have somebody here tonight who probably knows about that, too. But uh, let's take a break first, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to that. Bill Shept. And Bill's, you can go to Bill's site, and if you want to see the Adrian Tulsh Memorial, go to that on YouTube. The Late Joey Reynolds Show brought to you by Leap EDU, where real estate professionals and those who wish to be real estate professionals go for training and continuing education. This is Sunday Night Live with the late joey reynolds show are you we in debt can't make your monthly life. bills are you making your payments but the balances aren't going down bankruptcy might be right for you don't be fooled by debt consolidation the process is expensive and can take as long as five years debt consolidation is a business bankruptcy is the law go now to nybankruptcy.com schedule a free consultation with a duly licensed attorney don't put your financial life on freeze for five years start rebuilding your credit in as little as 90 days debt settlement most people can't settle their debt because they don't have the money bankruptcy is your fresh start go now to nybankruptcy.com to schedule your free consultation your financial life will be reviewed by a duly licensed New York attorney. Each case must be reviewed and there are rules that apply. Not all debt is dischargeable. Not all people will qualify. Bankruptcy is not the end. Bankruptcy is the beginning. Visit nybankruptcy.com today. You found a true variety show with Sunday Night Live, audio and video. It's the late Joey Reynolds Show. With Danny Morgan is here. And Bill Shep, Danny Morgan, you guys should meet here. You guys, have you ever met? No, I just shook hands. He's great. He's great. Right. And and so are you. Now, you, you know a lot about the inside stuff with show business because that's what you do in a way. You do television. I worked 50 years in New York television. Right. And it was fun in those days. Now it has not become fun anymore. Why? So, well, the corporations have taken over. And, you know, the, the people that we know and love, like Jackie Gleason and Steve Allen, uh, when you worked with them, you had a job for life. And well, they got rid of all the personalities. Regis. They're gone. Oprah. Letterman. They're, they're gone. They're all right. gone. I'm gone. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost gone. No. Anyway. no, so what do we do? What do we do? How do we, how do we rekindle I, this fire I don't fire know, but, here? you know, a, a real, real quick story regarding my book, Last Stage Manager Standing, only five stars on Amazon. My first day at Search for Tomorrow, I have to go back to Morgan Fairchild's dressing room. Of course, her Christian name. Patsy Ann McClenny, which I love the name. Anyway, That's a better too. name. And the producer <laughs> says to me, she says, you have to go back and make sure she's wearing a bra. <laughs> 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 it's, it's one of 500 stories in the book. Well, you know, now this is short form radio. Really so short. we try to Apparently. get people on. Uh, no, no, but don't be offended. <laughs> no, I mean, no, you know, no. see, when this thing is really settled in another week or so, we're going to be on two hours. Oh. So then you'll be able to, then we'll relax and do like we did on the all night show, just talking to her. 
until we don't want to talk anymore. But he does have a book called The Late, The Last Stage Manager Standing. Danny Morgan yes. and also Bill Chef. Hmm? Bill Chef, thank you for thank coming. I just met him. You guys. <laughs> yeah. And you come back. You come I back would love anytime, to. Anytime. Yeah, we'll tell more stories. All right. We love Let stories. a smile be your umbrella, but don't get a mouthful of rain. Thank you, Jay. Oh, yeah, the cannolis are from... Uh...